This video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. This is me, taking a break from producing video game related internet content to enjoy a delicious bowl of Magic Spoon cereal. Actually, I frequently find myself reaching for Magic Spoon as a midday snack. It's packed with protein, 13 to 14 grams per serving. It's totally grain free and has no artificial colors or sweeteners, which is great. Most importantly though, it's got zero grams of sugar and only four to five net grams of carbs per serving. I've been trying to watch my blood sugar recently, which means cutting back on my carbs. And I can't even tell you how thankful I am to have such a tasty cereal that I feel good eating. If you want to try out a variety pack of Magic Spoon, hit the link down in the description, use the code Arlo, or simply head to magicspoon.com Arlo and you'll get $5 off your order. Actually, you can even just scan this QR code. They made it easy for you. Every purchase comes with a 100% happiness guarantee. Thanks again to Magic Spoon. Now, on with the video. Flip loop. My friends, it has been a long, 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 long wait. But it's finally happened. Nintendo did a Zelda. They gave us the Tears of the Kingdom. I've played it. I played it a pretty okay amount, did the whole opening area, got to the surface, and have been doing a pretty good amount of stuff past that too. So this is a, this is an early impressions of the game. Wouldn't be surprised if by now I've played like 15 hours or something, but you know, it's a big Zelda game. So that's like nothing. That's like a <laughs> drop in the bucket. And now I'm here to talk about it. Um, the very, very first thing I wanna say, just like as kind of a general statement, I, I thought this was already kind of obvious based on like the final uh, pre-launch trailer, but now, but now that like I've finally played the game, the whole idea, the whole idea that oh, it's just a $70 DLC, it, it's beyond ridiculous at this point. It's just, it's so objectively false. People who are still chiming in on like Twitter threads and stuff to say things like that, like I don't I don't wanna be mean, but like you're embarrassing yourselves. You really are. This is not DLC. I, this game is so vastly different from Breath of the Wild. And like it uses the same map, but then like one, it adds so much new just place to go on top of that, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then even the map parts that we've seen before, like they feel almost unrecognizable a lot of the time. There's so much extra stuff that like, sure, when you view it from a wide angle and you see like the major landmarks, you're like, oh yeah, this is like the Breath of the Wild Hyrule, like sure. That's it. <laughs> like the similarities end there. I've been playing this game for so long now and like almost everything has just been new. Just like the tasks I'm taking part in and the places that I'm going and the things that I'm seeing, things I'm interacting with, it's like all been new to at least some degree, you know? So like, so like, yeah, let's get into it. So you've got your like sky islands and stuff and um, and there's a pretty good amount there. I mean, like, it's just like the Great Plateau. The opening area is one big sky island and it's humongous, just huge. You can spend forever exploring it. But then even beyond that, they did the thing that we said would be cool over and over again. We were just like, you know what would be cool? Breath of the Wild except caves. Just like you see a hole in the ground and you go into it and there's caves to explore. They did it. It's just the, the exact thing that we were saying we wanted. I was, at least I was saying that I want, they just kind of did it. That, that exact thing, the exact way. I, yeah, there it is, caves. Just a bunch of caves all over the place. So that's a lot more. And then this is, a, this is so, I don't know how, this is so big, I almost don't want to say it, but like, I, this is an early game spoilery thing. I'm going to mention all of the things that are presented to the player early on in the game. You know what I mean? Like, don't, you're not watching this unless you're playing the game. And you would find this if you were playing the game. You have to purposefully not. This, pff, it blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. One of the most pie in the sky wishes that I think maybe anyone had for this game was the idea that it pulls a Skyrim and basically has like an entire underground, like an entire underground that stretches across the map. Just like a second Hyrule beneath it. That's, that's what Skyrim kind of did. Didn't seem possible. Did not seem likely. They did it. They, they did it. I am in awe. I, I'm still in shock. They did it. There is a giant sprawling underground area beneath 
Hyrule. And it's so much fun to explore because even more than just being more space, it's also like super duper dark and it's filled with nasty stuff and you have to like light it up yourself and you find these beacons and they light. So you're slowly building out your map by lighting up the area. It's incredible. And again, that's the whole like, oh, this is DLC. It's just like, it, no, <laughs> this adds, it adds such a humongous amount to the game, even on top of all of the other changes that happened to the landscape, because all these ruins have fallen all over the place. It's so, yeah, between all of this, everything is different. Everything is different and more to such an absurd degree. And of course, it's not just the places that you explore, but also just like the stuff that you do, all the different mechanics and your abilities. And uh, I, I can't even touch on all the different abilities because it's just, this too much. I, there, I, <laughs> I could easily, just based on what I've played, I could easily ramble about this game for hours. So like, I've really got to just kind of tighten it up a little bit. Hit some key points. Let's talk about, let's talk about weapon fusing. Um, it is a lot less complicated than I think I was expecting. I know a lot of people had this, oh, I'm just gonna tape a bunch of sticks together and that'll be my weapon. But like, no, you can really just like put one material on one weapon and that's it. But I'm kind of relieved because of that, because <laughs> because it's, it's not as overwhelming as I was kind of afraid that it would be. It's quite intuitive. It's not even a thing you necessarily have to do. It's just kind of, if you wanna, you can staple rocks and stuff to your sticks. Um, and it's really nice. It's, it's incredibly fun between that and um, just being able to free throw objects and attach them to your bow, it's, it's everything. It's, I mean, just, just the amount of abilities that they have given to all these different materials and they've added more materials, it's massive. It's humongous and you have so many uses for all of these materials, it's incredible. And then of course, Ultra Hand, like I've, I've barely scratched the surface on this, you know, like early in the game, you're presented with some fairly basic puzzles, but like, even those are so satisfying to solve. You know, I, I tried not to watch too many trailers, so even just, just the idea of like, oh, it's like a rail. What is this? Oh, it's like a, oh, it's a hook? Oh, so you put a hook and then, it, and then it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I've only done like a few puzzles and I can already tell that just like, it's, <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words here. It is such an immensely deep mechanic and I am so excited about the idea of using it more. And I know I'm never gonna be like, these people are inevitably gonna be like making these really giant crazy contraptions. Like I'm not smart enough to do too much with this, um, but even just what the game provides me, the little challenges that it provides me with, I'm so excited to see more, even though I'm still kind of coming to grips with it. You know, I kind of like, I forget all of my abilities sometimes. Like I just <laughs> forget that I have things. Uh, and like some of these shrines, like the shrines are basically, you know, almost all based on Ultra Hand. And, and so it's kind of trickier. I don't, my brain is still making the shift from the old runes or something, but like, I'll go in there sometimes just be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, There's so many options and they give you just these materials to use. And it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a lot. Between all of the new mechanics and all the things that you can do and the fusing the ultra hand and everything, there is an element that's a little bit overwhelming. You know, it's the scope of this game's mechanics is just so humongous. It's so huge. And yet the game is not demanding too much of me so far. And I'm, I'm a little scared, but I'm also just so incredibly excited of just the potential, even just some of the puzzles that they, that the game has shown me. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's good. That's, that's so clever. And you know, that's that, that Nintendo thing when they have this idea and they come up with so many clever ways to use it. And this idea is so humongous and so deep that of course they're gonna come up with ridiculous stuff. And I can't wait to see what else I see. And then just like new, just features just things to do. There's just so much. Every time I turn a corner, it's like, oh, that's a thing now. That that kind of little activity, that's a thing. Like, oh, like going on monster raids with like other townspeople and you all like attack a fort. Like, okay, that's a thing now. That's just another new activity. Go into a cave. Oh, look, that's a new kind of monster. Yeah, that, they've added so many new kinds of enemies. You know, Breath of the Wild had a bit of a problem in the enemy variety department. They have added a lot. I don't, I can't obviously don't know for sure, but it feels at the moment like they've doubled it. At least in terms of smaller enemies. I'm still waiting to see if there are any like really big ones. You know, you had your Lynels and Hinoxes. I kind of wanted some more big ones. I know there's one I saw in the trailer. Um, so I don't know how many that'll be, but like, yeah, for like basic enemies, so many, so many new ones. And then uh, speaking of the townsfolk thing, this, okay. So this is great. I love this. 
I I know, like, I, if I had seen more pre-release material, I probably would have had a better idea, but I kept thinking this had to take place in some other time, you know, some other realm, Link Falls, and I, it just felt that way. Everything seemed all caveman-y. Um, but no, it's not. It's just that the, uh, the upheaval happened, and all this stuff happened, and everything fell from the sky and opened up from below, and the world is so different that in all of that, you know, all those trailers, I assumed it had to be a different time, but it's not. It's the same time. It's like, you know, presumably a few years after the events of the first one and everything is just kind of different, but I'm so happy. <laughs> I was really afraid it would be some prehistoric time where the world was still really desolate, but it's not. This game is giving me like everything that I wanted from Breath of the Wild. I mean, it was nice to have like the serene destroyed world kind of thing, um, but now, the people are playing such a more active part. There's so many more people, so many places where people are, and they're, yeah, they're, you know, they're attacking monsters, and they're, they're doing research, and they're, they're actively rebuilding Hyrule. And that is exactly what I wanted to see. That's exactly the kind of thing that I wanted to see, especially in a sequel. And because it's a sequel, and because it doesn't take place in the past or whatever, like, all the same characters are here. We get to see what they got up to, and, and it's, it's these ways that, again, this feels like a sequel, not a DLC. It couldn't be a DLC. And in terms of mechanics and just the story and the characters and everything, literally could not be DLC. This is a sequel. This is a direct sequel. And as a direct sequel, it's... I... So far, at least so far, who knows if that'll change, if it makes sense, but so far, it's everything I could have wanted in a sequel. And, um... You have your performance issues. I might as well mention that. That is one thing. It It is... The Switch is struggling so hard. And this is not ineptitude. This is not lack of polish. They've been working on this a long time. The Zelda team, they are pros. This is clearly the Switch struggling to run this game. And there are some times when you're just... You're using Ultra Hand. Or you're just kind of not doing anything in particular. You're just kind of doing something. And it chugs a lot. And it is frustrating. It's really frustrating. It's just... It's so... We're in the future now. I, I hate to still be playing Zelda games like this. Not a huge problem though. Apart from that, I'm almost at a loss for words, like what I've experienced this game so far. It adds so much. We can see why it took so long now. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I do still think Pandemic probably hurt it a little bit. Um, there had to have been other things. I, I get the feeling that they spent a long time just kind of messing with the game. Just trying to like figure out what, you know what I mean? Like I would not be surprised if they we end up seeing in interviews, they're like, oh yeah, it took us like three years before we even knew what the game was. <laughs> Cause like, that's what I get. Because I don't know, because all of these new ideas seem so carefully crafted and so carefully built upon the uh, foundation established by Breath of the Wild. And there's just, there's so many new ideas, so much new content. Like, yeah, I, I get it now. I wish it didn't take six years, but like, yeah. It's a lot easier to understand now because this is something big. Like, they, I mean, they, they would have made a lot of money. It would have been very successful if they had just taken Breath of the Wild, changed a little bit of stuff, maybe just new dungeons, new shrines, maybe a couple new mechanics or something, slightly different story. Like, they, they could have done so much less, <laughs> so much less and gotten away with it, especially if they had done it quicker, you know, if it was like two, three years later, it was just kind of like, you know, Breath of the Wild 1.5, that, that might have felt more like DLC, but it still would have worked and it still would have made a lot of money. But they, they went all out on this. They did something incredible here. And, and it's funny because Breath of the Wild is seen as one of the greatest games of all time. You know, just recently, uh, some website did like a top 100 games of all time and they pulled like 300 different websites and influencers and reviewers and all this stuff. Breath of the Wild ended up being number one. And despite that, despite that fact that some people already think it was just a complete game changer, completely just changed the concept of open world games, I'm also hearing a lot of people who are coming out of Tears of the Kingdom saying that Breath of the Wild feels like a tech demo now. Like, it feels like the tech demo that would eventually lead to Tears of the Kingdom. And that sounds like such a hyperbole, I, I can't help but feel it myself. I really can't. Like, Breath of the Wild seems just so basic now. <laughs> you know, now that I've played this, it's so basic. It's so archaic. There's, oh, well, I mean, you know, you can do this. That's pretty cool. But like, can you do, I, I, I don't know. 
again, I, I could ramble forever. Tears of the Kingdom, it just, it opens up so much and it takes so much of what was already there. And I mean, it, it's, it's also just kind of stepping into its its destiny, you know? Because like I was even saying about Breath of the Wild, it did feel like some features were missing, some crafting elements, you know? Things to do with your materials. Why are we getting all of these materials if we don't have that much stuff to do with it? So it, it almost feels like this was inevitable. It's another thing that makes it actually feel like that was kind of a tech demo for this. Like it's, I mean, Breath of the Wild's great, but it's gonna be, I kind of wish I'd replayed it more recently. It's gonna be hard to go back. <laughs> it really is. This, yeah, I don't, yeah, I could go on forever. So that's the gist. That's my uh, early impressions of the game. And, and you know, like Breath of the Wild, I feel like I, I've been playing for all this time. You know, a couple days of playing pretty straight here. And yeah, I've, I, I've explored some of the map, you know, I, I've I've unlocked, a, a few, I've uncovered the map for like a few areas. I haven't really explored those areas very much. I've just kind of <laughs> filled in the map, but there's still like a hundred trillion million things to do. I've barely done any shrines. I'm finding all this stuff on the map and marking it and I'm not actually exploring it. There's the whole underground. There's all, there's the sky and everything. And yeah, it's... It's a, it's a lot, you know. I know the whole seventy dollar thing is a, is a whole argument, but like they're they're delivering in terms of like content, you know, like amount of hours for your money at the very least. It, there's there's so much content. It's the kind of game, especially if you've never played Breath of the Wild, you know. Like I I'm a little bit less likely to dig in at the moment and like go through little details and like just try to complete everything because there's so much to do. In Breath of the Wild, I really just wanted to do it. I didn't like get all the Korok seeds or anything, but anything I saw, I wanted to tackle it. So I feel like anyone who didn't play Breath of the Wild or they're just in that mindset to just do everything, it's like, okay, well, have fun for the next 300 hours. This game, it, it's staggeringly, staggeringly enormous. So that's that. Those are my early impressions. Um, I do not know when the full review is gonna be. I have no idea. I don't even know what the full review is exactly gonna be like. You know, I don't wanna wait two years and do a big fat review again, but I do wanna do a big re I, I really don't know. So yeah, don't, don't like, don't wait up. Don't, don't hold your breath. <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna take. Kind of just playing the game and feeling it out and, um, We'll see. Please do us all a favor. Give us some of your, you know, pretty non-spoilery <laughs> impressions and thoughts about Tears of the Kingdom down in the comments. And I will see you later. Have fun playing. <laughs>